What's up YouTube, Jay here. Recently I've noticed that in my YouTube statistics, lots of people have been searching for how to run TypeScript in VS Code. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to run TypeScript scripts from VS Code. And conveniently, most of the steps I'm gonna show you will also work through the command line without VS Code. Although the debugging which I'm going to show you will be specific to VS Code. First, I'm gonna show you how to run a simple script, and then I'll show you how to debug that simple script using VS Code. And finally, we'll create a small NPM project that transpiles the TypeScript to JavaScript and then runs the JavaScript. Before we really get started, it's important to understand that Node, the most common server-side JavaScript environment, is a JavaScript runtime. It actually can't run TypeScript code. Similar to how C and C++ are compiled down to assembly and then machine code for the computer to run, or how Java is compiled into bytecode for the Java virtual machine to run. We need to compile the TypeScript into JavaScript so that Node can run it. Converting TypeScript to JavaScript is also referred to as transpilation, since we're converting one high-level language to another high-level language. Whereas with C, C++, and Java, we are converting across abstraction levels to non-human readable code for the computer to use. The following demonstrations assume you have VS Code and Node installed. If you need help installing Node, I'll link an installation video down in the video description. Now, let's hop into the video. First, let's write a simple script for us to run in VS Code. Let's call it calculate.ts. In this file, we'll write a function to sum an array of numbers. We'll take in an array of numbers, and then we'll loop over each number and add it to the total. Then we'll return the total. This could be written more concisely by using reduce, but less concise will be kind of nice for our debugging example. And finally, we'll call the function and log the result. Now let's open up our terminal in VS Code. We can do that by pressing Control and backtick, or by clicking Terminal, New Terminal. I've configured git bash to be my default terminal. I don't remember what the default is, but the default would be fine too. We can run our script via the command line using a library called tsnode. We could install it globally using npm install g tsnode, but that is generally not recommended because it can make it harder to keep track of dependencies. Instead, we'll use npx to run the npm packages without globally installing as recommended in the npm documentation. The command to run is npx tsnode calculate.ts. This will take a few seconds to get started as the TypeScript gets type checked and transpiled into JavaScript. Then our script will run and output the result. This actually isn't VS Code specific at all. I'm just accessing npm via the command line interface. This means I could also open up git bash, PowerShell, or Windows command prompt, and as long as they are properly configured with npm and node on the path, they will run the script exactly the same as you can see here. The second thing I will show you is how to use VS Code to debug our script. This can be really helpful if you're dealing with bugs and need to track down their location, or when following the execution flow on a new or unfamiliar code base. We're going to use the same code that we used before, so we can go ahead and copy over the file. This time, the example will only work in the terminal embedded in VS Code, not external terminals, because it uses some embedded debugging tools in VS Code. To run and debug our script, we need to open up a new terminal instance in VS Code, but this time, make sure it is the JavaScript debug terminal. This is that special terminal in VS Code that automatically attaches to any node scripts that are run from within it. In this terminal, we can enter the same command as before, and we'll get a similar output, just with some extra messages about the debugger. But if we add a breakpoint by clicking to the left of the line number and then run the script, we will notice that the code execution stops when we get to the line with the breakpoint. Now we can hover over variables to see their current value. For example, we can see the value of num and the value of total. We can click the buttons on the debug dock to continue to the next breakpoint execute the next function, disconnect the debugger, and more. When I click continue, it will resume the script and stop at the next breakpoint. In this case, it will stop again on the same line since we are in a loop. If I view the value of num and total, we will notice that now they have a different value. They have increased. Since we're summing an array of positive numbers, in this case, the total has increased. This debugger also allows us to view the contents of arrays and objects. When I click continue from the last breakpoint, the script runs the console.log statement and finishes. This debugging may not be super helpful with this relatively simple code we have here. We can pretty much look at the code and see what it's doing. But you can imagine how helpful this would be on a larger, more complex project or a project that was new to you. In this example, we ran a script with just a single file. But if our script called code in other TypeScript or JavaScript files, which is pretty typical on most projects, the debugger would jump to the breakpoints in the other files too. You'll also notice that so far we haven't seen any actual JavaScript JavaScript files, which might seem odd since earlier I said that Node can't run TypeScript directly, but can only run JavaScript. Under the hood, tsnode was actually handling the transpilation for us in memory, but in this next example, we will actually see the transpiled files on the file system. 
The previous two examples were really best for running simple scripts. If you have a full-on project like a Node Web API, you'll typically have an actual NPM project to handle all your dependencies. In this example, we'll continue using our simple calculate.ts script, but a complete project such as a Web API would work just the same. In this example, we're going to create a simple NPM project. We're going to add a step to transpile the TypeScript into JavaScript, and then we're going to add a step to run and debug the JavaScript. First, let's create the NPM project. I already have the 3 hyphen transpile and run directory, so I'll switch to that. But I could also just create a new directory. Notice that I've already copied our calculate.ts script over. Once I'm in the directory on the command line, I'll run npm init hyphen y to create a new project and just go ahead and use all the defaults. Now I'll add TypeScript and TS node as dev dependencies using the hyphen capital D. Now let's add the dev, build, and start commands that we will use to transpile and run our app to the package JSON file. Our dev script is going to use TS node and the in-memory transpilation that it uses, which will be good for running locally. But that in-memory transpilation does add some overhead, so it's not optimal if we were going to deploy this code in some kind of production environment. I'll also go ahead and copy our script into a source directory rather than have it in the base directory of the project, and you'll see why I do that in just a moment. The build command will use tsc, or TypeScript compile, which comes from the TypeScript package. This will be used to transpile the TypeScript files in the source directory into JavaScript files in the dist directory. And finally, the start command will actually run the transpiled JavaScript files, which will have been placed in the disk directory by the build command. This JavaScript file doesn't exist yet, but our next step will be to configure TSC to create it during the build step. In order to configure TSC, we need to create a tsconfig.json file. We'll go over a basic configuration in this video, but I'll also include a link to more information about the tsconfig file in the video description. The first property, out there, is the directory that the resulting JavaScript files will be placed in after they are transpiled. Notice that this is the directory that we used for the start command in our package.json start command. The allow.js property isn't actually necessary for this example, it's not used at all, but uh, if we had some JavaScript files that we were importing into TypeScript files, we would have to set this allow.js to true. In this case, it's literally not used at all. The target property specifies the ECMAScript standard that the file should be transpiled to. If you have to support a super old browser, like Internet Explorer for some reason, that doesn't have the latest features, then you may need to target an older standard, but for the most part, ES5 or ES6 should work in most cases. And last Lastly, the include property is an array of file names or patterns to be transpiled. The paths are relative to the location of the tsconfig file. The asterisks are wildcard characters, which mean any files in any directory under the source directory will get transpiled. Remember, the source directory is where we put our calculate.ts file. In this case, the only file that will be transpiled is the calculate.ts file. So I could have just added the path directly to that specific file. But in larger projects, using these wildcard characters is very helpful. Also note that in this video, we're using tsc, but there are lots of other ways to Transpile transpile TypeScript to JavaScript. Babel and Webpack are two other options, but they typically require more configuration. Another newer tool is SWC, which stands for Speedy Web Compiler. SWC is written in Rust and is very fast. I'm not going to go over it in this video, but I'll put an SWC example in the GitHub repo, which will be linked in the video description. Now that we've talked about how the translation works, let's run the npm commands that we just added. The first command is npm dev, which uses ts node as we used in the first two examples. If we run npm run dev, we will see the script run and output the result, just like we did earlier. Now let's run the build command by running npm run build. This runs the tsc command, which reads from the tsconfig.json file and transpiles the code as specified. We will see that this new disk directory has been created with a single JavaScript file. We can take a look at this file and notice that it's pretty similar to the source file, but without the TypeScript types. If we run npm run start, it will run this JavaScript file from the disk directory. Now let's take a look at debugging this. Notice that if I open up the JavaScript debug terminal, then add a breakpoint and rerun the npm start command, the execution does not pause on my breakpoint. This is because the debug Bugger doesn't know how to map the breakpoint in my TypeScript source file to the JavaScript file that Node is actually running. I could add a breakpoint directly in my transpiled JavaScript file, and that would work, but that may not be possible if the transpilation step included code minification or obfuscation, or just if there are a ton of files that are being transpiled, it would be difficult to jump from source file to transpiled file to add that breakpoint. So it would be very nice to have the ability to add a breakpoint from the source file. Fortunately, this is possible via source maps. 
Source maps tell the debugger which code segments in our source file map to which code segments in our transpiled file. This allows the debugger to do its thing. To enable source maps, we just need to add another property to our tsconfig.json file. Under compiler options, we can add source map is true. Other transpilation tools usually have an equivalent setting, so if you're trying to debug code that has been transpiled by another tool, make sure to check out their docs. Now that we've enabled source maps, we can rerun the npm build command, and once the transpilation is finished, we'll have a .js map file in addition to our .js file. This map file contains information such as the path to the source and target files, as well as mappings for code segments between the files. I don't imagine that you'll ever need to manually view or edit anything in these map files, but it can be good to know what they are used for, and you can see if your debugger's not working, are your map files there? Now that we have our map files, if I rerun the npm start command, we will see that the breakpoint in the source file successfully pauses execution of the script. And that brings us to the end of the video. As a quick recap, in this video we discussed the difference between TypeScript and JavaScript, and how Node and the browser can only run JavaScript. We went through three examples of how to run and debug TypeScript both in VS Code and in the terminal. Our first example involved writing a simple script and using tsnode to run the script from the command line. Our second example involved using the VS Code JavaScript debug terminal and tsnode to run and debug our script. And our third example involved creating an npm project and defining some scripts to transpile and run our script. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you found the video helpful, please give it a like so that more people will see it. If you want to see more videos like it in the future, consider subscribing so you can be notified. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.